If I were to read a book a week for my entire adult lifetime, and I lived an ordinary lifetime, when I was all done, I would have read maybe a few thousand books, no more. In this library, that's from about here roughly to about here but that's only a tenth of a percent or so of the total number of books in the library the trick is to know which books to read but they're all here What an astonishing thing a book is. It's a flat object made from a tree with flexible parts on which are imprinted lots of funny dark squiggles. But one glance at it and you're inside the mind of another person. Maybe somebody dead for thousands of years. Across the millennia, an author is speaking clearly silently inside your head directly to you writing is perhaps the greatest of human inventions binding together people who never knew each other citizens of distant epochs books break the shackles of time a book is proof that humans are capable of working magic and this room is filled with Some of the earliest authors wrote on bones and stones. Cuneiform writing is the remote ancestor of the modern Western alphabet. It was invented in the Near East about 5,000 years ago. Its purpose, to keep records. Records of the purchase of grain, the sale of land, the triumphs of kings, the statutes of priests, the positions of the stars, the prayers to the gods. This cone was made around the year 2350 BC, 4300 years ago. There were people chipping and chiseling away the message on this cone. What is that message? Prayer. The inscription on this cylinder honors a king, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon in the sixth century BC. For thousands of years, writing was chiseled into stone, scratched onto wax or bark or leather, painted on bamboo or silk or paper, but always in editions of one copy, one copy at a time. Always, except for inscriptions on monuments, for a tiny readership. But then, in China, between the second and the sixth centuries, paper, ink, and printing with carved wooden blocks were all invented more or less together, permitting many copies of a work to be made and distributed. This is Chinese magic from the 12th century. It took a thousand years for the idea to catch on in relatively remote and backward Europe. Just before the invention of movable type around the year 1450, there were no more than a few tens of thousands of books in all of Europe, every one of them handwritten. Fifty years later, there were 10 million printed books in Europe. Learning became available to anyone who could read. Suddenly, books were being printed all over the world. Magic was everywhere. It is 23 centuries since the founding of the Alexandrian Library. Since then, a hundred generations have lived and died. If information were passed on merely by word of mouth, how little we should know of our own past. How slow would be our progress. Everything would depend on what we had been told, on how accurate the account. Ancient learning might be revered, but in successive retellings it would become muddled and then lost. Books 
permit us to voyage through time to tap the wisdom of our ancestors. A library connects us with the insights and knowledge of the greatest minds and the best teachers drawn from the whole planet and from all our history to instruct us without tiring and to inspire us to make our own contributions to the collective knowledge of the human species. There's a fair number of Gutenberg Bibles and first folios of Shakespeare in the world, but most of the books you see in front of you are limited editions with very few surviving copies. But there also exists in the world mass printings of paper-bound books that I think are still more wonderful. For the price of a modest meal, you get the history of Rome. Books are like seeds. They can lie dormant for centuries, but they may also produce flowers in the most unpromising soil. These books are the repositories of the knowledge of our species and of our long evolutionary journey from genes to brains to books. Libraries in ancient Egypt bore these words on their walls, nourishment for the soul. And that's still a pretty fair assessment of what libraries provide. 